Hello YouTube, Stillborn86 here with another microelectronics video. I guess I should also welcome Reddit because uh, this video is in response to Jay Wegger? Jay... Jay... Joe Wegger? Jew Wegger? Uh, J-W-E-G-R-17. Um, I saw him post a couple of questions on Reddit about the Raspberry Plus and some LEDs and uh, I started typing out a response and I realized wasn't coming out in the best way possible and a video would probably be much better at answering his questions and showing you all what you want to know yada 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 um, so as you can see here I have two Raspberry Pis I have the B plus and I have the A plus okay for this I will be using the A plus but it doesn't really matter as long as you have a plus version um, it it should be the same because they both have the same 40 pin GPIO setup okay the original A and the original B do not have 40 pins um, this can be done just with different equipment and some different code um, but that that's neither here nor there I, I'm, I'm guessing that Jay Wegger has the B plus because of the T board that I saw him post um, those usually come with B plus kits. So I'm going to set this aside because I'm not going to be using it since this is already set up, has a SD card and operating system on it. Um, it is the A plus. So since we're starting here, uh, I will explain the GPIO. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. Um, they are numbered. This top left pin here is long from, from as when this is on the right side of the board. The top left pin is pin 1, the one on the, just to the right of it is pin 2, and you can see the way that the outline here, if I can get this to focus, you see how the, how the, the square outline has like a, a notch cut out here? The, this white line that, that borders the GPIO, that notch signifies that this is pin 1. And this is pin 2 and 3 and 4 and so on and so forth down to pin 39 and 40. 40 is on the bottom right. Um, that is important to know. Um, and again, it's the same on the A plus and the B plus. They both share the same 40 pin GPIO. That's, uh, I keep hitting my camera and I apologize. Um, but they both share the same 40 pin GPIO. So that, that, that shouldn't matter. Um, if, if you're using a B plus. The next thing I want to explain is a breadboard. Okay. Breadboards come in all different shapes and sizes. This is a two sided breadboard, a double panel. Uh, most people only have the one piece right here but it doesn't really matter. Um, the thing to note about breadboards, columns on the extremes are all tied in vertically. So all of these pins on the far right are tied together and all of the ones just to the left of it are tied together. But in the main body of the breadboard, everything's tied into rows. So to explain that, if I were to take this jumper and plug it into here, I could take another jumper and plug it into here. Since they share the same column, right there as you can see, they're tied together. They may as well be soldered together like this. They might may as well be touching because current will flow through that column. Okay? If I move this over to the left, they are no longer in contact because they're not sharing the same column. Okay? Now I can plug this here, I can plug this in here, anywhere along this entire column right here for instance and they're still tied together and if I move them both over one I don't know, hell, right here why not since they're both again sharing the same column they're tied together now the main body th this is true for like, this middle piece here and th this extreme over here they're labeled that way so you can you can plug your ground into one column and your positive into another column and have power running throughout the entire body the body, on the other hand, is not tied in in columns, it's tied in in rows. So if I plug this here, I would, in order to make a constant connection, I'd have to plug this in here or here or here into one of these in the same row. If I plug it in here, they're not in contact anymore. If I plug it in here, they're not in contact because this is not tied in columns, it's tied in rows. So I can plug it in here or here or here. I can even plug it in right here and it won't make contact. 
they they may as well be on opposite corners of the board. They might this one may as well be way over here because this is not tied in in columns. These are tied in in rows. Okay, so these are columns. These are rows. Um, and the third thing you need to note about a breadboard is this valley, this ridge. This ridge does not connect rows. So if I plug in a jumper into let's say row 10 here and then I plug in another one into row 10 over here they're not tied together even though they're sharing the same row this valley splits them up again they may as well be on opposite sides of the breadboard because they're not tied together even though they're both sharing row 10 okay um, that is for the T board, which we'll explain here in just a second, and for chips. That way, this pin doesn't ground out to that pin. If if I plugged in, if I plug this chip in, like this, since both of these pins are on pin four, I may have well just may have just soldered them together because they're going to ground out. Okay, and this is just a five 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 timer, so it's it's. You know, I, I'm just using it as an example. Since they're both on pin four, since this second pin and this uh, sixth pin are on pin five, they're tied together, and these two pins are tied together, and four and eight are tied together. So that's that's why this valley is like that. So you can bridge these this way. If I can get it in the board. And now they're no longer connected because this valley splits up the pins. All right. So that being said, let's set this aside. Take that out. Just like the B plus, because we're not we're not going to focus on that. We're worried about the A plus. Now let's talk about diodes. Diodes are an, an electrician's friend. They're going to be your friend. Um, there are a number of things you can wire up. Relays, switches, motors, servos, buttons, whatever. Um, LEDs are going to be the cheapest, most simplistic. Um, LEDs have two legs, a long leg and a short leg. The short leg is the cathode, or ground as some people call it. And the long leg is the anode, or positive. Um, you can denote that... Let me see if I can get this to zoom and focus. Maybe not. Uh... No, there we go. Oh, well, I had it. Um, as you can see, there's a rim around the very bottom of the plastic shell. There will be a rim on one side and a flat side on the other. There won't be a rim on one side. And that, that flat side is the cathode. And I've marked mine black just, just to give me a better visual of which one is cathode, which one is anode. Um, so that's something. Um, LEDs do follow the... the uh, Ohm's law as diodes, voltage equals current times resistance. So without any resistance, you can have an infinite amount of current running through a diode. V equals IR, V over R equals I. Your current, I, can be infinite without a resistor. Because of that, you must have a resistor in line, as I have here. Um, the resistor can be plugged into either the cathode or the anode side. Here I've got them all plugged into the cathode sides, which, you know, ju just to make things simple, I've got anode, cathode, anode, cathode, anode, cathode, and then long side is anode, so anode, cathode. As you can see with all the black, black marks facing the same way, and this guy is twisted really badly, all the black hash marks are all facing the same way, so anode on the left, cathode on the right, and so I've got jumpers leading to the anodes and resistors leading to the cathodes, and then all of those running to ground. So I've got anode, I've got a jumper leading to the vertical row here. Let me get my pointer. I've got a jumper down this row to the anode, and it bridges the diode into this row into a resistor and then into this column for ground. Okay? So, LEDs must have a resistor. I'm using 220 ohms here. 
Uh, you, it depends on which LED you're using or what you have on hand. Just as long as you have something, you should be okay. Um, if you don't use a resistor, again, you'll pull in an infinite amount of current, and it will burn out your LED and destroy it. Uh, since we're here, I guess it's a good time to explain this T-board that uh, Jay Wegger had. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I know I am. There's no way that's how it's pronounced. Um, these are really nice because it labels out all the GPIO that comes out of your Raspberry Pi. Um, it breaks out 5 volts here for your positive in the column again, ground over here in this column, 3.3 volts over here. You also have 5 volt and 3.3 volts, you know, in certain places. Grounds are kind of hidden around here. As you can see, there's a ground here too, uh, ground all the way down here in the corner. Um, but it, it breaks things out. And it, it utilizes the breadboard in a very interesting way. That way, this ground is attached to all these pins on pin 20. And 26 is on, you know, all these pins in 19. And since I wanted to use pin, you know, let's say 22 here, I just plugged it into one of these holes that pin 22 is plugged into. Because I can use any of those three holes. I, I needed pin 18 here. And so I used one of these in row 6, right here. Pin 18 goes to this green LED, and then it goes to this resistor here, and it goes to ground, and then it cycles back to the Pi. So that's how that works. It again use, utilizes this, this uh, I can't see through the, the camera, it utilizes this channel right here so that this, this, for instance, this ground doesn't short out with pin 21 because the channel breaks up between there. They're not connected. If I had put this over here, and ground in here and then 21 here, then yeah, they would be connected, it would short out and my pie would fry. So that's why this is set up this way. Um, and then one final thing for the T-board, going on 12 minutes now, man, we need to get going. Um, for the T-board, one of the things that got me when I started out was I didn't know how to plug the T-board into my Raspberry Pi. I did not know if the T-board went this way or if it went this way if that makes sense. Um, to let you know, it goes this way. A good rule of thumb is if the USB is pointing to you, the T-board points to the right, okay? Um, again, this right here in the top left corner is pin one, and over here, the top left corner is pin one. So you wanna, you wanna mimic that, okay? Pin one to pin one, and that's how this goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Okay. Now, I have LEDs wired up to pins. I have my T-board wired to my Raspberry Pi GPIO. I have a Wi-Fi dongle, and I'm going to power my Raspberry Pi up. Or if I can do it, if I'm not too retarded here, which wouldn't surprise me. I've got lights, the Pi is going, should be good. Okay, now for the software side of things. All right, forgive my dusty old laptop here, but it's what I got right now. Again, GPIO is going to be an important thing with the Raspberry Pi. You can go online, find the GPIO pinout. Um, like I said, that top, that top left is going to be pin 1 and then two and three and four and five and six, all your odds down to pin 40 on the bottom right. This will break out which pins are ground, which ones are five volt, 3.3 volt, which ones are general purpose, which ones are this, serial, you know, whatever you need. It'll show you the grounds are in black. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of different layouts. I kind of like this one. It tells me all that I need in a very simplistic way. It's quick to see. Um, Again, we plug things into GPIO 17, 18, 27, 22, which is going to be 11, 12, 13, and 15, which I'll show you is why is it important. Uh, essentially, I've got 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, just skipping 14. And uh, we'll play around with that here in a second. So let's, let's get into this. Since I've got my Wi-Fi dongle in here, I can SSH into my Pi. Or not? Maybe not? Okay, there we are. 
Uh, it's gonna take some time. Got a little cow say there. Let's clear it up, make it a little nicer. Um, let's go to the desktop and see what we have there. I should have a Blink program. As you can see, blink.py. We can look at that. If I can type it. Let's close that out really quickly. Um, I little intro here, some commented out stuff saying I wrote it. Um, we are importing the time function and a random function, and we're importing GPIO as GPIO. That's those are all things that um, you can look up online. Again, we're going we're going on 16 minutes now. I kind of want to speed this up. I don't want to waste your time, and make you make you bored. Cleaning up GPIO, uh, setting up pins 11, 12, 13, and 15 as outputs. Again, according to that uh, this right here, we're using 11, 12, 13, and 15 on the board, and that's what I've declared, 11, 12, 13, and 15 as outputs. Um, I set up a while loop, that way it runs indefinitely until I stop it. It picks a random X from 11 to 15, because we're using 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. It picks a random number for X, a random number for Y, if x doesn't equal y, if they're not the same number, and if x isn't 14, and y isn't 14, then we're going to turn on the x pin, we're going to turn on the y pin, wait 0.15 seconds, turn the x pin off, turn the y pin off, and then we're going to go back up here to the while loop and just continue this until I stop it, okay? So you can pause that, rewrite the code, play with what you want, yada, yada, yada. So, since we're SSH'd into here, let's look at the Pi. It's on, it's ready to go. Let's uh, sudo python blink. So when I hit enter, it should start the blink. Picks two lights, they do their thing. Yada, yada, yada. They're doing their thing. So that's how you wire up an LED. That's how you set up the Raspberry Pi. And that's your intro to breadboards. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to comment, post. Find me on Reddit, Stillborn86, uh, on Reddit. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.